All right, questions. I know I have one question about uh, mount weed. Mount weed is very hard to kill. <coughs> Chemically treated and spread professionals with licensed applicators. It takes about two to three applications to get a good kill. Um, we've gone as far as taking out the bulldozers. I mean, we had a job on the East Busway three or four years ago. We had acres of not we, we had to get rid of. Um, I, I hired a subcontractor. We actually brought aerial bucket trucks to get up over it, spray it. It was all magic juice. Dropped all the leaves, grew right back. We spent two years to the point I actually took an excavator and a bulldozer and cut the whole little side off and all the way. Does not we break down our finding before it goes into production? Chop it down as low as you can, and when the new sprouts are pushing back through, is the ideal time to get ground up. Um, so we're we'll taking the product down and put it to the system. And you're seeing like 90% control. That's really good. Yeah. So it's all the timing of the process of killing the market. Yeah, we we try to do our control applications right now. Once that plant's translocating down. We haven't cut it down. Thankfully, I'm not fighting any knot weed at the moment. I don't want to. The best thing to do is move, is what they say. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah really, the best thing to do is move. You have knot weed problem. Yes, ma'am. Eric, you made the blanket statement of not using geo, geotextile, and right. bioretention. Right. Is that true of all geo? Because I think there are some newer geos that can be used. You know, I'm not an expert in geotextiles. I have had my experience with wovens and non-wovens. We just avoid it. Now, my friend Greg Kramer here sells the stuff for a living. I'm sure he can tell us that I'm wrong and I think something he's got is better than what I'm, you know, I'm making my silly blanket statements again. But for my money and my name and my reputation, I'm just not going there. I'm sorry. I got another way to do this. In lieu of the uh, using the straw, is there some other method that you said sand or pea gravel that you recommend? You can build a main, like, yes, you can go gravel, sand, soil without any separation there. Because you're, what you're trying to do is transfer that, you know, you're, you're pulling the water. What's happening, I told you before about how water moves from big pore spaces to little pore spaces. What we're doing is we're perching out water in that rain garden. You're perching it out, perching it out, perching it out in those layers, okay? One of the reasons some of these rain gardens fail, people don't put enough soil, 18 inches is, your, is really your sweet spot, because what happens is you're, about 30% of that soil column ends up being saturated when the water purges between the transition layers, so it's still giving you 12 inches for root growth. If you only have, you know, six, eight, six, 10 inches of soil, and 30% of that is saturated, where you're not, it's anaerobic, Essentially, it's a short-term anaerobic. It's not, it's, it's, there's no oxygen. You're making your, your root bed so much smaller. So you're, you're allowing your plants to be stressed whenever that thing dries up. Because the point of this, it's designed to dry up. The reason I pass that bag of soil around, <clears throat> I want everybody to look at that and see what it looks like. What that is, that is, a, that is our, you know, our sort of proprietary, not proprietary, it's like the design we use. That's 50% coarse asphalt sand, 25% screen topsoil, 25% compost. That's what we use when we're making our, our rain garden mix. If you're buying rain garden mix, there's a couple processes that will make it for you. They're going to make something like that. <clears throat> the point being is because of the type of compost you're using, which is stabilized compost, it's black, it's black, it's dark. If you look at the color of that stuff, <coughs> If you go on a job site and something's in that rain garden that doesn't look like that soil, it's not rain garden soil. Don't let anybody tell you if it's, if it's yellow, it's not rain garden soil. It, it needs to feel, you should be able to feel that sand in there. You should be able to, you can't ribbon that material. Unless if it's highly organic, and you can actually build a rain garden soil with no sand, Highly, you know, highly organic rain garden soil, you can do that. Um, it, it, it's, it's possible, and we know it. There are, there's a, there's a uh, 
soil scientist out of Wings Hole we do work with who doesn't use any standard. He basically uses silt soils. These are silt-based organic soils, and um, they're, they're successful. They're not sand-based. But I wanted you to see that <coughs> soil, because if somebody's telling you, oh yeah, we put, this, we, put the, we put it in there, and it doesn't look like that, send it to the lab. Okay. All right. I got to talk too much. I got to go. Um, I'll be around for you. You want to walk around after lunch? So if anybody's got questions, you can uh, hit me that, okay? Thank you.